So good morning, class. How are you today? Good morning, sir. Good sir. We are doing fine. Okay, that's great. So before we start, uh, let me check your attendance first. So uh, as I check your attendance on my invitation, so everybody is present. Very good. Now, uh, welcome to our lesson for this day. And we'll have another science lesson that we're going to discuss, which is all about photoelectric effect. And for this lesson, here is our learning ob objective. So at the end of the lesson, you will be able to explain the photoelectric effect. But before we start with the lesson, let's have a recap about the previous lesson. So yesterday, we learned about photon. Now, who can describe me again what a photon is? Okay, Roger, go ahead. Sir, a particle of light is called a photon and it, and it is the basic unit of all light, also known as the quantum of electromagnetic radiation. It's also known to be massless, meaning it does not occupy space, which means it is a form of energy rather than a form of matter. Okay, very good. Very well said. Now, let's have a watching activity. So this picture is a smoke detector. And I'll present a video about this kind of device. And after, I want you to pay attention on the video and give reaction. Will that be okay? All right. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. There are two main types of smoke detectors available. Photoelectric detectors work by using a light sensing chamber. As smoke enters the chamber, it disrupts the path of a laser and triggers the alarm. These detectors are better at sensing slow burning or smoldering fires. Ionization detectors use two electrically charged plates to ionize the air in the sensor. When smoke enters the detector, it disrupts the flow of the ions and triggers the alarm. Ionization detectors are stronger at detecting fast flaming fires. However, due to their design, they can be triggered by dust or steam. A dual sensor detector includes both a photoelectric and ionization detector, offering the best smoke and fire protection. Okay, so that ends the video. Now, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video a lot. So may I ask, who can give his or her reaction? Okay, so we have Carl. Okay, Carl, go ahead. A smoke detector is an electronic fire protection device that automatically senses the presence of smoke. Um, it is used to warn occupants of a building of the presence of a fire before it reaches a rapidly spreading stage. Okay, that's a nice observation, Carl. Now, who can? Uh, who else can give his or her reaction? Okay, so we have Janelle. Janelle is raising it, uh, her hand. Okay, go ahead. Sir, a smoke alarm is significant for the early detection of fire in an area. Um, fires can occur in many ways, but no matter how or where, having a smoke alarm is the first key step towards safety. Okay, thank you, Janelle. Now, before we discuss what's all about a smoke detector and how it works, so let us have an activity. So I will demonstrate an experiment through a simulation using PET and I want you to do the following. So our task is to observe what will happen on the electrons on the metal surface if the intensity and the frequency of light are changed on these simulations. So this activity is called photoelectric experiment. So observe and record or take notes on the following details if I will change the intensity and the frequency of light. So here is the simulation. First, 
uh, let me just give you a parts of the simulation. So this is the intensity uh, section. This is the frequency section. And if I will change the intensity, there will be a light beam that will strike this surface. This is our target for the metal surface. And the metal surface can be a form of sodium, zinc, copper, platinum, and calcium. Now, this is a like a battery that when electrons are moving in this kind of uh, section, the electron flow will have a complete circuit that will cause a current. Now, observe what will happen if I will change now the intensity at a frequency of ultraviolet. So, observe carefully. Okay, now, as you notice, there are particles that are coming out in the metal surface. These particles are electrons. So when a light strikes the metal surface, some of the electrons are being ejected. Now, I will reset again the intensity, but this time, I will change the frequency of light. So let me uh, adjust it on the infrared section and increase the intensity at 100%. So, based on that, there are no electrons being ejected. And I, I will increase the frequency from, uh, from infrared to yellow, to green, to blue. Okay, that comes a time that electrons are now being ejected on the metal surface. Okay, this time, I will change our target into other, uh, or, uh, I mean, surface. So, let's use a zinc. So, let us observe what happened. So, when we use zinc, there seems to be no electrons being ejected at ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet frequency and 100% intensity of light. Now, let me change again to copper. Okay, no electrons again. Platinum. None. And calcium. Okay. So, there are few electrons being ejected. So, that's the end of the simulation. Let's have a discussion about this experiment. Okay. So, here's a question. What determines if electrons are being ejected? Can anybody give his or her answer about this question based on the experiment? Okay, we have Noella. Yes, Noella. Sir, both the frequency and intensity of light determine the number of electrons ejected. Since they are seemingly directly proportional to each other, the higher the frequency of light and the more intense it is, the more photons are produced, hence more electrons are yielded. Okay, very, very nice observation, Noella. Now, let's have another question. What do you think affects how many electrons are ejected from the surface? Okay, so we have Jasmine. Okay, Jasmine. Go. Uh, sir, since the frequency is is closely related to the energy of the photons, it affects the rate of electrons being ejected. As seen in the experiment, the type of material is also variable. Okay, that's great. And now, for the last question. Based on the experiment, what do you call this phenomenon when electrons are being ejected from the metal surface when light strikes on it? This is called... Okay, so we have Raphael. Raphael, you're raising your hand. Sir, it's called photoelectric effect, sir. Okay, great. 
detail, we have the photoelectric effect. So by definition, photoelectric effect is a phenomenon in which electrons are released from or within a material when it absorbs light. So as you notice in the diagram, light rays strikes the surface and some of the electrons are being ejected through electron emission. Also, this effect is often defined as the ejection of electrons from a metal surface when light falls on it. This experiment showed that when we increase the light intensity and frequency, there is an increase of kinetic energy of electrons. That is why electrons are being ejected on the metal surface. Okay? But are you curious who discovered or who introduced this effect? This scientific uh, discovery was first established by Albert Einstein, but uh, in his hypothesis, he described the emission of electrons from an illuminated plate that was not yet universally accepted before until it received a further experimental verification. Now, since it was uh, verified that his experiment was true and uh, universally accepted, in 1921, Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for explaining the photoelectric effect. Okay? So, I hope you've learned a lot about this concept and you've learned what is a photoelectric effect. So, let us have a assessment if you truly understand our lesson. So this is your activity. I want you to explain the photoelectric effect or how this uh, concept occurs in a one to two sentences. I will give you five minutes to do it in your scratch paper and later we'll, I will call two to three volunteers to share his or her answer. So time starts now. Okay, so time is up. So let us have the processing of your output. So who can give first his explanation about how photoelectric effect occurs? Anybody from the class? Okay, so we have Timothy. Okay, Timothy, go. Sir, sure, when a matter is hit by an incident light, it gives off negatively charged particles turned into free electrons. A high frequency wave has an increased um, kinetic energy activating the excitability of protons. Okay, very good. Who else can give his or her answer? Okay, so we have Ira. Okay, Ira. Sir, in 1905, Einstein came up with photoelectric effect. The idea that light is described as wave particle or either. This concept is a phenomenon where electrically charged particles are released from or within a material when it absorbs light or electromagnetic radiation. Okay, very good. So it seems that everybody is really understand or have truly understand our lesson for this day. So before we end or before I will end this lesson, I will give you a short activity that you can do at home. So this is just a continuation of our lesson. So I want you to conduct an internet search about more real-life applications of the photoelectric effect, just like the concept of or the application of photo, uh, smoke detectors. Now, make a brief explanation about how the concept of the photoelectric effect is being applied on this uh, application. Now, uh, we will have this processing on the next meeting. So, do you have question before I close or before we we'll end our class? None? No, sir. Answer. So, everything Answer. is clear. Answer. Okay, very good. So, that ends our lesson. See you our, uh, to our next online class. Goodbye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye and thank you, sir.